Um, and thank you very much, Carla, and uh, for, for inviting me to speak because now I'm going to, I'm representing a project that was started by St. James Anglican Church 20 years ago. So I am not a church member. I never have been. So I am not I am not representing them. I am representing a member of the community that has been involved in the project from pretty much the very beginning. So it's called the, the Refinery Arts and Spirit Center. It was originally called St. I can't, I'm not even sure if this was the order, St. James Arts and Spirit Neighborhood Welcoming Center, something like that. But really in those words, you can hear their, what their objective was. And um, small congregation, seats 200, usually about 70 people on the pews every Sunday. Uh, but they had a, a nice central neighborhood location in a very artsy district. Uh, and they had a parish hall that was sitting right next to the church that they just rented out. They rented out, it was an income, income from the, for them. Um, late 90s, they started to have a very, a very um, robust community program, uh, a music program within the church that became a community choir that became, became, uh, you know, all of a sudden they, there was this whole new life and whole new uh, demographic that was coming into their walls and they thought, this is great. This has brought so much to us um, and we're kind of felt alive again. And they thought, how can we keep doing that? So they just they saw the they saw that their that their parish was a the parish hall was an asset that they could share. So rather than rent, they decided to take it back, and which it had been rented to the same dance school for 30 years. So that was not a smooth transition. So I relate to what somebody said earlier about making changes. Um, uh, but they, but they did just have to have to just take the whole thing back. They had hoped to share it at the beginning and then realized that wasn't going to work. Uh, and they started this program, uh, and they, the building was named the Refinery. It's the biblical reference of refinement through fire. Um, they chose. I think one of the smartest things they did is they chose a mandate, and that was loosely um, the development of the community through arts and spiritual or activities that develop um, um, develop the community through arts and spiritual activity. So that was their, their broad umbrella. So um, it wasn't Anglican based. They felt they had a church right next door, that that's what that building was for. But I always described it, well, not always, because we morphed and changed and it was so hard to find a way to describe it. I described it at the place where St. James held hands with the community because it was the place where there was an overlap. It was the place where there was common belief and common value. So um, it, 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 the, the Anglican community had, had things above and beyond as the, as the uh, uh, secular community did. But there was a place that the refinery could, could nurture the areas that we all shared. Um, the programming was, was primarily uh, classes, like wellness classes during the week. So yoga, um, tai chi, it moved into dance things. And then it also, the other one was art. Was art. So art classes, children's classes, and performance and live performance. And that was more what my area um, ended up being. But in the early years, I did the first, about the first 10 years, I did all the programming. Um, what was interesting in that formation too was the church had the, had the means, like they, they had the building and the asset that they wanted to share. They had the, um, uh, they had this, this objective, their mandate that they wanted to follow. And then, they, and they had an idea of how that was going to look, you know, the, their little plan, you know, A, B, C, D, and this is what's going to happen in the building. Never did. Never did. All the ideas that were on paper didn't happen. It might have started out with a few. By the first year, everything had transitioned because 
the community told us what they needed. We had an idea, but 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 it but it wasn't what was needed. And so we, as soon as we sort of set up the the ability to have the conversation, people arrived and said, "Hey, I need this. You've got a space. I need a space to do this. You're doing something on." on these sorts of things. I'm a new yoga teacher and I don't have a studio, but I really want to teach this. And uh, so they came to us and, and told us what they needed. And that I think was really, I think it was really uh, another thing and that was one of the success things of the organization is they let that happen. Is we, we listened and we understood and went, why not? We, our idea is still on paper and this person, I'm talking to an actual living person that, that needs something, so let's do it. The other thing through the years is that objective or that, that mission statement of the development of artistic and, and spiritual practice was the guiding light. So when we were making choices or there were tough choices or there was the need to, fit, you know, losses and things need to be filled, we always went back to that objective and asked ourselves, does this fill that objective? Um, does this develop the community in the way that we are, what our objective in, in development is? Um, it's been there 20 years. Uh, things have changed. Uh, management structures have changed. Um, activities have changed. Users have changed. Uh, but it, if something leaves and there's the space and then it seems to get filled with something else, sometimes short term, sometimes longer term. So it just keeps, it keeps changing like that, uh, door in, door out, which is another thing that I think is, is uh, important. There still is, it's been 20 years, and I think it's at a moment of a little bit of even that stagnation, where it still uses the model of the wellness classes during the week and performances on the weekend, like arts, the arts programming and performances on the weekends. And, um, and I feel like there's probably a, uh, an opportunity for a little bit more of a mix up and, uh, and looking at that and, and actively going out to, to, to see what else might be happening that we're missing. But, um, but it, keeps, it keeps going and we keep having new users all the time. Oh, you know, one more thing and then I'll, then I'll, I'll be quiet. But the other thing is, is that it, it, the, the refinery is right beside the church, but we, many, many times we use the church itself for the community programming because once people are now comfortable and trust the refinery they were they were way uh they were it just became an extension so the refinery is an extension of the church from the church's point of view and the church is an extension of the refinery from the community's point of view and um and they've really melded quite nicely uh, we used to, we even had classes in the sanctuary in the early years because we were so booked up and we had to, had to keep finding new spaces. Um, and I remember one, it was a philosophy class, uh, from the university, the philosophy class had it in the, in the sanctuary. And the first time people were really reluctant to go into the sanctuary. Uh, they just really didn't, they couldn't figure out why it was appropriate for them to be in that room talking about something else besides besides having an Anglican service. And it was really interesting as that broke down because I think what happened with that is people's understanding of what church is broadened. Both the, both the members and the people from the community started to see a broader, have a broader idea of what a church is. That's it. <laughs>